Welcome back to Confident Conversations. Today we're finally Shaz. Hi. Hello, hello. Hello, I'm so excited. I know, we've, we've planned this for a while. I know, um, and we've already said so much before we even hit record. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, so let's go yeah. back into into conversation. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Um. Christmas is a big one. It's coming up. Yes, very exciting, especially for us as Latinas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we celebrate on the 24th. Do we celebrate on the 24th or do we celebrate from, like, September? <laughs> Realistically. Uh, yeah. From from September. The moment the weather changes, it's like Christmas is in the air. Oh, how does it go? How does, it, how does the theme, theme go? Ah, uh, and it's a Colombian show. I can't remember how it goes. You're about to, like, wake up a memory in my head, aren't you? Yeah, like, but you know, I can't ones remember is, it. It's, it's going to come to you later. It's going to bother you for the whole day and then is, come to you later. It is. Oh my god, I heard it the other day and it's going to annoy me now. <laughs> um, but yeah, we celebrate on the 24th. It's yeah. a, a sort of a big one. Um, I'd say for us, it's it's a special one. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's the most sort of important event that comes up. Yeah. Um, very, I would agree, yeah. Very family orientated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like you were saying, birthdays, happy birthday, this at the other, yeah. you know little cake little gift, whatever yeah. but when it's christmas it's like everyone's birthday on mm-hmm. steroids it's yeah. like super like yeah yeah to be fair this this year when i said my 30th I 30th got, is big though that's big yeah, yeah. i got a mariachi band which i wasn't expecting you what i got a mariachi band <gasps> stop did you yeah. i love yeah. that i love that yeah 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 i love that that's so yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, um, my godfather got it for me, and Aww. I was like, "What the hell?" Did is you going cry? On? I would have cried. No, <laughs> I, I was born in shock. I was like, "Is this for me or for my cousin?" Yeah. Um, the guy was a bit of a dick. Yeah. <laughs> but because every song we requested, he was like, "I'm not a CD. I'm not like a." And I was like, "Okay." You know what? You're about to open another topic because I so. I had this with a, with not a, the band that I had at my wedding. Mm-hmm. It was fine. I had, um, do you know Robin Del Castillo? So he performed at my wedding. Okay. He was amazing. Loved him. But the band that we had at my had at my sister's yeah. wedding, they were we were like, can, I, I, do you know? I'm not gonna name and shame because I can't mm. even remember anyway. But anything we asked for, he was like, no, 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 we've got something else. No, 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 yeah. we've got something else. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but this is my sister's. Well, it wasn't her wedding. It was a wedding party. Yeah. But we we're like. And they're so rigid. I feel like a lot of them are there just to perform for themselves and don't realize they're performing for the other people. Like mm-hmm. they see it as like a promo op. Yeah, I get it, but I, I, I've, I've been there. I've, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was a bit annoyed because he spent quite a bit of money on it. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, it was it was different from other birthdays. Um, but going back to Christmas, yeah, it's <laughs> it's a special one. Yeah, it is, and it's so like. You spend the days leading up to it going absolutely mad because the, all the cooking's being done. You've got to clean the house. Family are coming, this at the other, or you're going somewhere. What you're gonna wear? Yeah. What you're gonna do? Um, especially for us as women, getting your nails done, getting your hair done, getting this done, getting that done. Um, and every that this there's such this buzz, but then the moment you all mm-hmm. sit down, it's just like. It's like a Hallmark Christmas movie, yeah. Latino version, you know? Like, it's just so lovely. Yeah. Um, I had a really special one this last Christmas because everyone came down for my for my wedding. So yeah. um, my cousin who, my Colombian cousin who lives in Germany, he studies okay. in Germany, he comes down every year to celebrate Christmas with us because it's easier than him going back to yeah. Colombia or Costa Rica where his mom is at the moment. So he came down. My husband's family came all the way from Malaysia. Okay um to for our wedding so his mom his um nephew his nephew's wife his Mm -hmm. other nephew like a bunch of us so they had malaysians here celebrating their first christmas here um and they saw their first snow and then we had my yeah yeah it snowed it it snowed i've got it on camera because it was their first snow they'd ever seen um and they cried bless them and then my sister's husband, his mum and dad came from Colombia, from Cincelejo. Okay. Their first time out of Colombia, they came to London for my wedding, bless mm. them, and they stayed for Christmas. So we literally had 
A full house. A full house. We had us, my family. We had like my dad's Iranian, but he always yeah. celebrates Christmas with us. So we had like the Colombian side. Oops, sorry, the Colombian side, the Iranian side. We had a bunch of Malaysians, mm -hmm. Colombians from Colombia, Colombians from Germany and Costa Rica. It was amazing, and like we. We just had such a big celebration and it was so nice to have it. It was like, it, it even gets emotional to like now thinking about it, just have all the family there. Yeah. Like the food, the cooking, like I'm the one, my mum's retired from cooking now. Okay. She's just like, I've done it. You're old enough. You can cook. Yeah. So I'm the one that's cooking, shoving my hands in chickens and stuff. And you know, like, okay. Um, and it's just absolutely hectic for me, but just mm -hmm. sitting there and having everyone like, You know, like Colombians, they don't do Yorkshire puddings, of course, because it's a British thing. They're like, oh, what's this pan? You know, like this yep. this pan thing. And I'm like, oh, it's not bread, it's Yorkshire pudding and like Brussels sprouts and getting them to experience Ooh, it our way. Oh, I love a Brussels. I'm going to cook you Brussels sprouts one day and you'll be a fan. Trust me, because okay. I do on point. Um, but it's just, it was so special. Just mm -hmm. everyone like having that. And especially as a Latino here, you pick up the customs that like mm. we have as Brits, like Christmas crackers. Yeah. They don't have that over there. Or like, you know, the Christmas hats that you yeah. pull. Um, and I remember like we sent my sister, she was living in Colombia a few years ago. We sent her a bunch of Christmas goods. Mm -hmm. And so she had a mini Christmas in Colombia and she introduced all her friends to Christmas crackers and stuff. And like, they were like, oh, what's this thing that yeah. you pull? It's just so special Christmas, isn't it? It is. Um, but going back to, to sort of big families, it's, It's special when, when you're all sort of united. Mm -hmm. The preparation, I hate it. I hate it so much. Um, because with my family, at least, we will start from the end of November, mm -hmm. trying to discuss what we're having for dinner. <laughs> And every time we're like, entonces, como has hecho? Mm -hmm. Almost like with tamales, eh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Eh, lechona. And then they'll go off topic and we're like, We didn't decide what we're making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's so annoying. Yeah. Um, and, and I grew up with females. My whole family is female orientated. Mm -hmm. So them getting ready and them going, what are you wearing? No, what are you wearing? And then you start <laughs> thinking, what am I wearing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are you getting your nails done? Yeah, I'm getting mm. my nails done. What color should I get? And this is every single year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for me, it's like, okay, we're just going to go back into that routine and go, Yeah. What are you wearing? <laughs> what are we having? What do you cook for, for Christmas? What do I cook? Yeah. Okay, because we cook... So, because we do 24th and we okay. do 25th... Yeah. Um. So, we normally do a bit more of a Colombian Christmas on mm -hmm. the 24th, um, but we have our staples. Like, I'm the only one that likes turkey in my house. Okay. So, we don't make turkey. Um, so we normally have like a big roast chicken. We never just go like with, we have to please everyone. I don't even know okay. where to start. Like my mom was like, I want salmon. So I'm like, okay, cool. Every year she's like, I want a salmon on the Christmas table. Okay, cool. I'll make you a salmon. And then my sister's like, you make the best roast chicken and roast potatoes. Okay, I'll make that. And then mm -hmm. my brother-in-law, my dad is like, you remember that lamb you made? Okay, cool. I'll make that. So when I tell you we have yeah. a chicken, a lamb, a fish, and there has to be arroz, always, yeah. arroz, but it has to be Iranian rice, because okay. Ira Colombians are big on rice, but Iranians yes. are bigger on rice. Are they? Yeah, Iranians are bigger on rice, because rice can be a complete meal. Like, well, so can, it can be for Colombians as yeah, well, isn't it? Yeah, it really can. But, like, with Iranians, you have so many different types, so we've always got rice. So you have, like, the standard, like, British stuff, mm. like, you know, your roast, your potatoes, your Yorkshires, your Brussels sprouts, which I do the best. But my mum's like, well, I want a salmon. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And then my dad's like, we need to have rice. Okay, cool. And then my mum's like, okay, tamales as well, you know? Ooh. All right, cool. Normally we get them and then they has, they, we order them from somewhere, but then there has to be empanadas for starters because what's a Christmas without empanadas? True. And my friend's mum makes the best one, so she always has a batch for us. But then there has to be things like, um, oh, what's it called? That dessert. Like a flan, you okay. know? Yeah, what's that one? Ah, Is it just flan? El, no. El pose de leches. Yeah, tres le yeah, yeah, yeah. So there has to be things like that, but then, like, basically it's just like a mixture of everything on the table. Okay. You've got your bunuelos as well for starters, pandeonos mm. for starters, you know. We just eat, we just eat. 
and then it's just that and then the next day the same thing okay and normally we're like oh we're gonna have loads left over the next day on the 25th no they want a fresh a fresh batch of everything so i do the same thing twice the next day oh um and then on new year's you do the same thing again don't you <laughs> so oh do you yeah yeah new year's we do the full thing again so you do three days yeah 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 oh, on new wow. year's they will want me to cook again oh wow. yeah so i just spend like literally my life cooking which i don't mind i like it but okay yeah but yeah. it's very much our table like you can see okay that's mm-hmm. the british christmas that's the colombian christmas yep. and there's some iranian bits there as well okay yeah definitely yeah see my mom and my cousin's mom long story it's very hard to explain so let's just see what my, my mom's my cousin's mom mm-hmm. they sort of divide the tasks so, yeah so if my mom does 24th my cousin's mom would do 31st mm-hmm. and yeah, it just yeah, makes yeah. it easier for them yeah 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 um we we'll all chip in and go okay this is for the ingredients this yeah is yeah this. someone brings something along like the postres or like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. my sister makes a mean natija that's it, Natija. That's what it's Natija. called. The Natija. Ah. That's it, Natija. Okay, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah my sister me- makes a mean one. I um, love it every year. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do we do for Christmas? Oh, we sing, we sing up until the next day. Um, we drink a lot of yeah. aguardiente. <gasps> yeah. Oh, God, I haven't had a sip of that in years. Um, Have you not? No, no. So I've cut down drinking a lot. Okay. Like, I basically don't even drink now, to be fair. Um... But aguardiente, you know when you just have that one drink that you think of, yep. that you, things start to come up when you think about it, you yep. know? Like, your stomach starts to churn just thinking about that. Sambuca and aguardiente. I can't even think about them without, you know? Really? Yeah. Yeah. See, I've, I've had aguardiente. No, let me rephrase that. I have aguardiente <laughs> every so often. And for me, it's... Every time I've gotten drunk and I felt sick, I'll be like, yeah, I'm not doing this again. Within two, three months, I'll be doing it again. It's, like, the, yeah. it's the aniseed flavour of it that I just don't, I can't, like, mm-hmm. growing up, you kind of had to, you know? Like, it was just like, oh, yeah. it's, it's the culture. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Like, my sister's the type of person that goes, so we had, like, a family barbecue recently. I say recently, end of August. And my cousin was driving. But my sister won't care. Mm-hmm. So my cousin will go, I'm driving. She'll be like, I don't care. If you get the number, you're drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for us, it's like... Oh, drink. They'll say drink early so that later on it will die even. down. And, yeah. Not even. <laughs> no, they'll start with that. And they're like, oh, well, you've already been drinking now. Just yep. carry on. Yeah. Yeah, see, for me, I'll stop at a certain point. Mm. But I'll be like, I want to get drunk. So Yeah, just leave the car here. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Mm. That's, it's just like, I think, not just Colombians, Latinos in general, but I mean, I can only speak mm-hmm. for Colombian being half Colombian. Yeah. We just love a party. We, we do. Just, we just love a, any reason to celebrate, any reason to like show some sort of, any reason to laugh, ooh, mm. any reason to laugh, to sing, to cry, yeah, to argue anything we just love expressing our emotions you know Mm. not in the correct way i mean they wouldn't like in terms of like talking about your mental health yeah doesn't exist that doesn't exist doesn't exist people weren't depressed in my day they just felt like my mum literally said to me and my mum works like she worked for the nhs she works in healthcare she goes when i was younger no one was depressed they used to just say okay well if you're depressed you're sad go and find something to entertain yourself you know Mm -hmm. go play outside um obviously that's not the way things are but if it's deep meaningful thing yeah. it doesn't exist but if it's just like dramatic like you mm-hmm. know novella type emotions uh, my, my cousin is very no my cousins are very emotional mm-hmm. let's put it that way when they watch spider-man they all cried Spider Man. Yeah, the I last probably, one. Yeah, I think I probably did as well. I'm. I've got that side. I'm. Emo- I will cry anything. I will cry anything. I tell you anything. Her mom will cry no way less. Mm-hmm. But if something happens to to my cousin, she won't react. Oh, it's his fault. So, isn't it? so it's, it's their fault. Yeah. So she was choking once, I believe. Everyone was sort of trying to panic and around my cousin. Her mum didn't yeah. react, didn't notice, didn't realise it was happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Or she'll probably say to her, like, we should have been paying more yeah. attention. Like, you should have chewed better. Yeah, as I'm saying, if it's anything, like, actually, it's mm-hmm. like, well, that was you. Yep. That was, that was your fault. That, that's very Latin. Yeah. It's very Latin. That was your fault. Yep. Yeah, I had it the other day with my mom. Like, bless my mom. She really does take a lot of care mm. of me. Um, I had it the other day. Well, it was, no, a couple of months ago. I got a bit of a cold. And she... I, <laughs> I had a bit of a cold. It wasn't terrible. My voice was going, but you know when you still feel like your voice has gone, but you still physically feel all right. Okay, yeah. You know, do you know what I mean? Like, you know it's coming. Yeah. But maybe it's not. So I'm still going to push forward with my day. Yes. And it was a good friend of mine's. It was his birthday. Mom was like, you shouldn't go out because you're not feeling well. And I'm like, no, no, do you know what? I'll just cover up, mm-hmm. you know. I don't drink anyway. So it's like, you know, my defenses won't be done. I'll be all right. I'll cover myself up. Yeah. Went out, came back. I was all right the next day. I was like, see, I took care of myself. I was all right. The day after that, I was like, oh, I'm not feeling too well. But I know if I tell my mum, she's going to be like, pues, you mm-hmm. know. I saw you go out without your yeah. scarf, without your hat, without this, or this, blah, blah. I'm like, mum, I'm sick. Just like, tell me when I get better. Yeah. Don't say I told you so. I know you did. But just like, just hug me and tell me it's going to be all right. And then when I'm better, then you can have a go at me. Ah, uh, pues yo no, yo no te puedo yeah. decir nada. Entonces, like, I won't, if you want anything, tell me. If not, yeah. then, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, that's all mums. Mm-hmm. How, going to the, to the male species in your family, mm-hmm. um, how are they with dealing with um, illnesses? Illnesses? Yeah. Like physical illnesses? Um, I'd say a cold. Okay, so my dad, my dad, I'm not going to lie, my dad is such a soft. like, he always wanted girls, he always wanted daughters, mm-hmm. and he is such a softie with me and my sister. Yeah. So, I have a lot of hospital visits because mm-hmm. I've got an illness, yeah. um, it's a chronic illness, I'm going to have it all my life. Yeah. Um, so, it's basically an invisible disability. Mm-hmm. Um, and my every time I go to the hospital for anything, my dad cannot cope. My okay. dad can't cope, he starts worrying, he gets anxiety, he doesn't know what to do, like... My dad, mm. he doesn't baby me and my sister, yeah. but, like, he forgets we're grown adults sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember one time the they were doing work at my house, so I had to stay over at his. Yeah. My, my parents are divorced, but they're still very good mm-hmm. friends, luckily. I have a very good, like, family dynamic. Yeah. Um. So I had to stay over at his, and I woke up in the morning, and he had left for work, and he had left me £20 on the side, and I was like, oh, bless him. Like, we're like, you know, when you're a kid and you need some yeah. pocket money, I'm like, I'm not going to say no, do you know what I mean? But so my dad, like, he worries so, so much. Okay. Like, he really, really worries. Um, so he's the opposite of my mom. He's not like, I told you so, or this or the other. He's just like, oh, what are we going to do? Do you need anything? Should I bring you soup? Should I do this? Should I mm-hmm. do that? Where my mom was like, well, my husband, however, now he's like, he, he's Malaysian, bear in yeah. mind. Somehow he adapted the Colombian mentality, the Colombian mother mentality. Well, if you're laughing, you're not sick. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. If you're laughing, you're not sick. Mm-hmm. If you're able to, to get up and make yourself food, you're not sick. I'm like, but I am. No, no, it's fine. Just let's let's go for a walk. You can walk it off. I'm like, I cannot walk today. Like, there's some days I can't walk. No, I, c- I can't walk today. Mm-hmm. No, no, you're fine. Let's walk it off. Oh. I'm, I, I, I cannot. No, no. He's literally, he's like my mum. He's like my mum with that. Well, you're, you're you're fine. You can talk on the phone to your friend. I heard your voice note in your friend, so you're fine. Like that kind of thing. But when it comes down to it, I remember I was in the hospital and I needed to get some blood tests done. Yeah. Um, and they did the blood tests and they went away and they took a lot, like I think like seven things of blood out of me. Okay. And I'm low in iron, so I have um I'm anemic, so I have like yeah. very low blood. And then I was, I always panic. I get blood tests done so often, but I always panic. And he mm. was like, oh, it's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. And then some other nurse came over saying, we need to do more blood tests. And he, something in him, I don't know what happened. No, you can't. She's had enough blood taken out. You're going to kill her. That's it. No, you can't do it. Takes the, the thing from the woman, you know, like the syringe. He's yeah, like, nope, yeah. sorry. She can't have any more blood taken out of her. Look at her. Look, look at her. Like, and I was like, oh my God, he cares. <laughs> like, that's the first time. I was like, he actually cares because normally it's quite hard, mm. you know. Um, But he was like, no, sorry. If you take any more blood from her, she's going to collapse. You can't do it. They were ready to chuck him out the hospital because he was holding the syringe yeah. hostage because he was like, you cannot take more blood from her. Look at her. Like, she's mm. she's got no color to her face. Like, she's drained. You can't take any more from her. And then afterwards, he was calling my mom. You have to come in because he knows my mom don't play. 
so he was calling mama you have to come in and stop them and this at the other oh, and like, damn. yeah <laughs> and then I was, I was like no it's fine take more blood for me um so he's very much like surface level is like if you're laughing you're fine but then when yeah. it gets deep to it he does worry because i know he does as well because like both him my dad and if we're talking about all the men in my family like mm-hmm. my brother-in-law um like they'll take me to appointments. Oh, sorry. Yeah. They, they'll take me to appointments. They'll call me after my appointments, check up on me. Mm-hmm. Are you okay? Do you need anything? This, that, the other, blah, 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 blah. My mum's the same. Like my mum looks after me very much, but she will yeah. tell me it's my fault. You know? Yeah. She'll tell me it's my fault. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. That's, yeah. that's a lot in mum. Yeah. How are yours? Both your mum and your dad, I guess. Or your your, your mum and your sister and your dad. Um, My dad, my dad used to be funny. He used to be my favourite. And I say he used to because of the shit he used to do. Um, so I remember once, as you don't know, I've got a disability. Um, it was very windy. Mm-hmm. It was during the, I want to say 2004. Might have been 2002 World Cup. I can't remember. It was during a World Cup. Mm-hmm. And it was raining, it was windy. And my dad, for some reason, I was late to school that day. Mm-hmm. And it was windy and it was raining and I saw like the first half of the match. And he was like, don't go to school today. It's fine. Oh, it, yeah. It, it, it's raining, it's windy. You're going to get cold. Yeah. And for me, that was like the best time to be with dad. Uh-huh. Because he let me get away with so much. Yeah. My mum, my mum was ruthless. She'd be like, no, <laughs> you're going to school, mate. So, do you know what's weird though? Saying that, when I was younger yeah. and I was in school... So basically, when my when my parents divorced, my sister stayed mm. with my dad and I stayed with my mum. Yeah. Just because that's the dynamic was. But like I said, we've got a really good family unit. We all get mm-hmm. on really well. But my sister lived with my dad. So it was just me and my mum. And um, there'll be days I wake up and I'll be like, mum, I just don't want to go to school. Like, I just can't do yeah. it. she would be like, okay, that's fine. But then if I was sick, if I had a headache or bellyache, no, you're fine. I'm like... <laughs> Make yeah. it mix. Like, I actually have a reason this time. She'd be like, no, no, you're okay. But this when I just, like, mom, I just can't go to school. Yeah. All right. It's like, am I better off just lying and saying Pretty actually? Pretty much. Yeah, it's like, make it make sense. Mm-hmm. But I think with mums, it's their way of worrying. Well, with parents, it's their way of worrying. They yeah. become a bit stricter because they don't always know how to, like, worry mm-hmm. the right way. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I get that. I mean, I was always closer to my mum anyway. Mm-hmm. She used to be the one that looked after me. Um, my mum, and, and I say this in the most loving way, mm-hmm. I, I resented my dad a little bit because I saw how hard my mum worked. Mm-hmm. So my mum used to get up early um, every time I threw up, every time mm-hmm. um, I'd be scared I'd go to her mm-hmm. um, every time I was sick. My dad would sleep through it, mm-hmm. but my mum would be the one getting up, making sure I was okay. Mm-hmm. And for me... That annoyed me because my dad wasn't doing enough. Mm-hmm. But now that I've sort of grown up, I'm like, ah, okay, he was working, he was tired. Yeah. I, I get it. There's other things that he's doing, you know. Yeah. We don't see it when we're younger. We don't. I mean, some of us, you kind of pick up on stuff, mm-hmm. but you don't. And also, you have to remember that your mum carried you for, you know, nine yeah. months, whatever. Mm-hmm. She has that mother's intuition. Yeah. So for her, it's natural to wake up. When she probably didn't sleep properly because she's mm-hmm. just there like pendiente like if she had yeah. like a noise or anything whereas that doesn't I mean there are like your dad like you said he was hard working he was there for you yeah. he took care of you but that doesn't it's not a natural instinct you yeah. know you didn't come out of him yeah. like you, he didn't birth you you know so yeah there's that yeah. for women it's just different mm-hmm. like you know like even me that I don't I don't have kids yet hopefully I will one day but there's instinct that just comes to you as a woman when there's kids around mm-hmm. like with my nieces and nephews right I used to nanny as well and it's like your spidey senses yeah. you know like something's happening to the the last kid that I nannied he was about like um almost two years old mm-hmm. and I swear to god I knew before he was gonna fall down like my head would turn and then he would fall you know, okay. or my head would turn and I'll go to yeah. him and then, you know, like things like that, that just comes to a yeah. woman, I guess, naturally. But yeah. it's true, like your dad probably did a lot more, like, and the, and he was there supporting your mum, you know, like. Oh, 100%. Because as I say that, like, I would only see my dad on the weekends, mm-hmm. put it that way. I would go to bed earlier, he'd get up at 
I think it used to be three in the morning. Mm. Um, get back at like ten. I think it was mm-hmm. ten ish. So I'd every weekend I'd be like, "Oh, okay, bye, mm-hmm. dad. I'll see you next week." Mm-hmm. And for me, that became like, "You're not there. You're not mm-hmm. doing anything for me." Um, that that became frustrating. Mm-hmm. And I think I got a lot of resentment because of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I get it now. But now he was he was working. He was working exactly. And if you think about it, he now, was working two to three jobs exactly. And imagine how knackered he was. Imagine how and that is yeah. so that like your mum's prov- providing emotional support and hands on support with yeah. you, right? But your dad, financial support, just mm-hmm. so that you know you can, your mum doesn't have to worry about that, you yeah. know. So, yeah. but you do, you see it when you're older, you do. like there's things that... You start to realise that yeah. and you're like, okay, this yeah. this makes more sense now and yeah. okay, this is what they were doing, this is how hard exactly. they were working in yeah. the background and we were like, yeah. we want this, we want that and yeah, yeah, yeah. like, yeah, sure. Especially your kids, you ask for stuff, you know, and you don't realise mm-hmm. that you can't always get it, but then your parents will work hard because they, you know, they want to do that for you, especially, yeah, you know when they feel like, like with both of us, I guess we were probably in and out of the hospital a lot as we were kids, right? Yeah. So when they can't do anything to to, to fix us, mm-hmm. you know, to make us better, yeah. they just do what else they can to sort of compensate, yeah. you know, because I'm sure if they could take the place of one of us, then they would, Yeah. you know? Yeah, my mum has said multiple times if, if she could get a tattoo and I'd be cured if she would. No. Um, if she mm. could take the, the pain away from me, she would. Mm. But for me, I think it's it's weird. It's, it's a weird feeling being in this position. Um, I think for me, like my dad got me a guitar, mm-hmm. I think 2006, 2005. I think that's the moment that I was like, this guitar isn't going to ever be thrown away. Mm-hmm. I never learned to play it. I never touched it, but for me it was like it was like a twenty pound guitar, and for me it was like this is special. Mm-hmm. This is mm-hmm. it's so special, and and now that I've I've got it, and every time I see him, like he worked hard for this. Yeah, you this. should learn to play, even if it's just a little bit, like just for him. Mm. I think that would mean so much yeah, to him. Was, like just get on YouTube and yeah. just yeah. It was twenty quid, but. Listen, it could have been two pounds, it could have been yeah. two thousand pounds. It's the fact that your dad went out like, and bought it for Exactly. Me. He thought, you know what, my son would like this, you know, <laughs> whether you did or you yep. didn't. It's this the thought, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that, and mum my mum has told me multiple times, been it. I heard that stuff yeah for it's for Daniel Sears be and for me I'm like, I can't, yeah. I physically can't bin it because it has too much Yeah, yeah. It's sentimental, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like it's it's almost like a um, like a symbol of him and what he's and like the fact mm-hmm. that you know he worked hard for it the fact that he thought about you when he was he, like yeah. he went to go get it and thought my son likes my son would like this is this for mm-hmm. my son you know it's just yeah yeah I think I think it's the only gift that that has that that feeling mm-hmm. for me mm-hmm. um, and it was oh, no, no, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even more special. It. I remember it so mm-hmm. so well. Um, but yeah, I think the relationship that I have with my dad is very different to the one that I have with my mum. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a, I'm a lot closer to my mum. Mm-hmm. I will annoy her a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad, my dad tries to make jokes. He isn't that funny, but but. Just he probably ev- is there, isn't it? <laughs> Eventually, no. Sometimes he'll come up with a dad joke. And I'm like, you're not funny. Stop. But you're laughing. <laughs> and and sometimes my mum will laugh and I'm like, it's not funny. This is just a really bad dad joke. But just sometimes yeah. he'll get me and I'm like, oh my God. I don't know if I'm laughing at the joke or if I'm laughing at the fact that it was so bad. Yeah. Um... But that's that's just the, yeah. the relationship that I have with them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think with my mum, I'll go more to the serious side. With my dad, it's more of the fun side. Yeah. Um, my mum doesn't like to have conversations about the disability or what what's happened. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I think for her it was more painful. Do you think it's a little bit traumatic for her? Yeah. Mm-hmm. She she saw me have convulsions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and she took me to her hospital. My dad didn't see it. Mm-hmm. But my dad would openly speak up about it. Um, he made a video on Instagram. Yeah, I saw. I saw that, yeah. And for me, being able to speak about it with him, it's, it's easier. Because mm-hmm. I feel like there's... <laughs> There's emotion, but there isn't like, okay, I feel guilty for... He doesn't have that Yeah, I think my mum feels more traumatised and feels guilty that she couldn't save me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but people, that's the thing that you you don't realise how much... um, When you have a... When you face something yourself, that your family face it with you. Yeah. I mean, you it is it's obvious they do because, like, mm. look, I'm I'm 33. I'm married, yeah. but I have actively chosen to live with my mum mm-hmm. because I know that there are days where I I'm going to need my mum. You know that I'm going to need to stay at home. Yeah, I could go and move out, and like my husband doesn't have to be a full time carer for me. That's not fair, you know. Um, but my mum, she was the one that was taking me to the hospital appointment. She was the one that yeah. was fighting for me, like there is something wrong, we need to find mm-hmm. out what's wrong. Um, and she she pushed and pushed and pushed. And I don't think I would have got my diagnosis um, if it wasn't for her. Because, you know, doctors can be quite intimidating as well, especially because what I have isn't visible. Yeah. You know, so they'll be like, no, it's just this. No, it's just that. The, the amount of times that I was just told like, oh, it will go away by itself. Years later, 15 years later, nothing's changed, mm-hmm. you know? So my mum, especially because she worked in the NHS back back then, like visiting hours meant nothing to her. When yeah. I was having an operation, when I was in you know surgery, or when I was admitted to stay for a while, they said our oh, visiting hours ends mm-hmm. at six, eight p.m. She's still there. Six a.m. She's there. Whatever, it doesn't matter. She'll flash a little yeah. NHS card that isn't mm-hmm. even valid anymore. She's there. She'll push it. But if I try and speak to her about it now, like personally one on one, it's difficult for her to talk about because she's like, I don't know where where you got this from. I don't know, like. Like, did I, is it my fault? Yeah. Like, she she blames herself. She's like, is it my fault? Did did, mm-hmm. did, did I do this to you? And I'm like, you know, yeah. no. But, but she, so she will fight the world. But when it comes to me and her talking about it, it is difficult. Yeah. Whereas my dad, I, like, I can talk to my dad about anything. It's fine. But I feel bad because I know my dad worries so much. So I don't want to. Yeah. But then I've got my sister as well. I've got, you know, I've got a good support system. And, mm-hmm. but yeah, you don't realize how much it affects everyone's life because i know like my mum constantly like i don't drive um that's a choice more than anything Mm. but like she'll worry about me getting the bus somewhere so she will be like okay well i'll leave for work a little bit later or earlier so i can take you because i don't want you walking too much because i know it could like so the issue that what i have it i have a condition called endometriosis okay um but when i had surgery for that it developed into something called fibromyalgia which is basically chronic chronic pain yeah and I develop a lot of cysts as well. So okay. I don't know if you know what cysts are. Kistis? Kistis, I think. So basically, mm-hmm. they're just ball of like grasas okay. that is just develops in my body and then it sort of push on yeah. a, like an organ or a part of my body. Um, so life can be very difficult for me, um, like walking and this at the other. So she will be like, okay, no, I know that it's like if I walk from my house mm-hmm. to the high road to like the shopping center, it's a 15 minute walk. I'll drop you because I know it might be difficult for you, Mm -hmm. even on a good day, you know? So she'll drop me. We won't talk about why she's dropping me. She won't say like anything about it, but she'll drop me. Even here, like coming here, Mm -hmm. my husband's like, don't worry, I'll drop you because my sister couldn't. I'm not going to let you get the bus or the train or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it impacts everyone else as well, you know, because you're good, you drive. (laughs) But for everyone else, they plan their life around, okay, can we take her here? Can we take her there? Can we, you know? But I think, I think it's difficult. Um, and I think for me, and I speak on my own experience, Mm -hmm. I think for me, I've never liked people planning around me. Yeah. Um, I think that's where my independence sort of came from. Mm -hmm. I've never liked asking for help. I've never liked asking for money. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's very admirable of you to that, you know? Yeah, I think, I think for me, it's always been about, you know, like my mum. Bless her. Sometimes I'll go pick her up from from seven sisters because mm-hmm. she has a, she's had a long day. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't do that as often 
anymore just because it became a, a sort of habit and I didn't want her to get used to it. <laughs> yeah. Me doing that every day and being like, Juan, I'm ready to be picked up. Yeah. Because that got annoying. Yeah. Um, doing it for about three years straight. Mm-hmm. As much as I love her and I thank her for what she's done, it did get a bit annoying, um, especially when I was doing a lot of childish shit. Yeah, and, when you wanted to live your best life. <laughs> yeah, and just play with my cousins on, mm-hmm. on online. Um, but yeah, I've never liked people playing around me. Um, I've always thought... Yeah. Of, that's the reason that, that I sort of learned to drive. Yeah. I don't want people to be like, We've got to take Juan. Juan wants to go to his friend's house. Let's take him. Yeah. For me, it's always been like, I can do that. I, yeah. can, I can get the bus. I can. Yeah. Yes, it might take me a yeah. little bit longer, but yeah. I don't want yeah. you to, to stop living your life for me. Yeah. That's, that's it, it is good of you. So I, I was like, I, ha- I was like that as well. Mm-hmm. But then I learned I had to accept help sometimes because I, sometimes I wasn't able to do a lot, you know, and then I would just yeah. be stuck at home. So I had to stop working my city job. Yeah. Um, 2019, my health took a massive turn for the worst. I was told, like, your organs are going to start shutting mm-hmm. down soon. Like, literally, your body is giving up. Yeah. I didn't know why this was happening, okay. but it's just things that kind of happens on and off with me. Um, and I felt it, but I wanted this independence. I was a city girl. I was making money. I was doing well. I had my yeah. job. You know, I was going into Central. Even my boss was like, Shaz, go home. You do not look well. And I'm like, no, I'm fine. And he was like, you can't even walk up the stairs. I'm like, no, I'm good. So, um, and I had that, I really, really, I was ignoring because I had, I had had surgery a few years prior to that and I was out of work for so long and I was going insane and I lost my independence and everyone had to take me here to take me Mm -hmm. there. So I was like that. And then when I I finally got my job back, I'm like, yeah, I'm doing me again. And then I realized, Shaz, you cannot do you, (laughs) like you need to slow down. I lied to everyone. No, I'm good. And I was like, even going out after work, clubbing, barring like yeah all sorts because that's the work culture in the city um and then towards the end of 2019 I was really like everything was shutting down in me and I was ignoring it ignoring it and then COVID happened so I had no choice but to stop Mm -hmm. and then it was kind of like a blessing in disguise my company that I was working for so I was an executive assistant for a tech company it was a really full-on job they basically said, Shaz, we're losing money. We're really sorry, but we're yeah. going to have to put you on furlough and we don't know if we can bring you back. So I was like, okay, well, I'm still getting paid as furlough. But in my head, I was just like, yeah, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. Yeah. Um, and then as my health started to deteriorate and I was slowing down enough to realize it, I was like, I don't think I can go back because I was ruining myself. I was literally killing myself. Like, yeah. f- like the doctor called me and said, you need to go into a and I'm like, no, no, I'm fine. I'll go in tomorrow. She's like, no, no, you need to go in now because we've just had your results, your blood mm-hmm. test results. And he said, yeah, but you need to go in now. I'm like, no, no, I'm still working. I can't, you know, literally ignoring it. Yeah. I'm not going home to him. I'm on nothing. And then, um, so even for things like that, I was like, do you know what? I'm just going to have to accept help. I'm going to have mm-hmm. to. And the fact that people were, I was trying so, like still to this day, it, you know, I did my yoga training. I became a yoga teacher, which is something that helped me yeah. not just physically because yoga really does help me physically, mm-hmm. especially with my, um, with my pain, but mentally it gave me something to do and I could do it on my own terms. Right. Yeah. So I work, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that's it. Cause I know my body needs a lot of time to heal. So I mm-hmm. don't work Monday. I don't work Friday. Um, But it got me out the house. I work in two of my jobs I have to get the train for. So I work in Central. So I have to go get the train. I have to go in Central. I have to Mm -hmm. do what I've got to do. Whether I'm in pain, whether I'm not, it gives me some sort of purpose. Yeah. But I know if I need help, they are happy to help, you know. So, but it took me a long time to accept it because that's why I'm so like, whatever, okay, if someone wants to drop me now, it's fine. Yeah. Because before I was like, no, I can do it. I'm all right. Like, you know. Yeah, and, and I and I couldn't, I I couldn't. Yeah, and um, I I guess I'm lucky that everyone around me drives, and there's always like, if someone can't drop me to something cool, yeah. it's fine. I'll get the bus, I'll get an Uber. I'll I love to walk because walking really helps. Mm-hmm. I'll walk, I'll do whatever. I'm fine. But accepting help was like a big thing for me because I really, really thought, especially coming out, having everyone help me. I hated what was going on with me. I absolutely mm-hmm. like I hated myself. Why is this happening to me? 
I got better. I'm living my life. I've got yeah. a city job. I'm earning money. Like I can get dressed up for work and stuff, and that's taken away from me again. You know? Yeah. Like it. it it's hard. Yeah. It's hard living with a condition. Um, I don't know if you ever got this when you were young, but I used to hear people go, "I wish I had a broken leg so I would get, I would get off school. I wish I had a broken arm." Mm-hmm. And for me, it's just like. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's really insensitive because mm-hmm. cause you're all there and you're like, no, you don't. Yeah. Do you know, I, I, yeah, I agree with you. And the, the problem with me is because when I was younger, they didn't mm. know what was wrong with me because nothing was visibly wrong yeah. with me, right? And I was just going in and out of hospital mm-hmm. constantly with like these really bad pains. And it was such random pains as well that they thought for a while I was making yeah. it up. Um, and I remember one time in college, one of my friends... <laughs> In college, she ate raw, raw chicken. She ate raw chicken to try okay. and get salmonella so that she didn't have to take one of our yeah. our exams. And um, I was like, do you not know how sick you're going to get? And she said, oh, it's fine, I'll recover. And then it's, in my head, I'm thinking, like, I don't get sick for a day. Like, I don't get unwell for a day. I'm, mm. I'm off for a month. Like, you know, and what she like, she's literally yeah going out of her way to give herself salmonella to give herself food poisoning by eating yeah. raw chicken i'm like just fake it like what's wrong with you why are you doing that so it's like when people play with their health it's really like oh my god do you not appreciate your mm-hmm. mm. i think in that sense we're lucky because we're, we're like we appreciate our health a lot more yeah 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 um i'll be honest with my medication i've been really bad um mm-hmm. i meant to take two Six, twelve, twelve, thirteen, yeah, fourteen tablets a day. Well, I don't take. I didn't take any of them. I'm just sort of starting to do a, the habit of taking them. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, it's like I don't need them. I'm fine. But once I start getting pains, I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. this is why I need to take them. Um, last year I was really bad. Mm-hmm. Um. For about six months, I was in pain. Mm-hmm. That was awful. Um, so I had an operation in 2005, six, five, five. Um, that left me on on crutches for eight years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I had spasms in my leg, which were painful. Um, and, and for me, I was always the guy like, that's fine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'll get over this. Um, 2013 came around. I was like, I really can't do with my mm-hmm. anymore. Crutches are, are fucking up my hands. I think I saw you. You did like a little video on this as well. Yeah. Yeah, they were fucking up my hands. They gave me blisters. Mm-hmm. I was slipping a lot because the rubber sort of wore out after a while. I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to mm-hmm. get rid of them. That in itself was a painful journey to to let go of Muletas after eight years. Mm-hmm. Um, but you probably did yourself justice by doing that because you could have... I, I've could like, have, look at where you are today. I could have stayed on them. Exactly. And then, in a way, you're not strengthening... You're, you're actually making yourself worse because you're not allowing your body to, to, to recover from, mm-hmm. from that. And you, like, I see how you go to the gym, how you were doing yeah. your boxing and stuff. If you just depended on on the crutches, I would, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today. I, and I thank myself that I got off them. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, I regret not getting them, getting off them earlier. I regret a lot of not doing physio, not not mm-hmm. looking after myself properly. And I do blame myself for that. But but it's all like um, what's that? In hindsight, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. shoulda, woulda, coulda kind of thing. But now, you're kind of in a position where you know, do you know what, if I do need to go back on crutches again, that's fine, I'll go on them, but I can come off them again. Yeah. You know? So you- like, if I do need to do this again, that's fine, because I know that I'm, I mm-hmm. I can, like, get through it. Not yeah. just, like, drag it on forever, but I can get through it. And I, I don't, like, I've not mm-hmm. known you, I mean, we've not even been speaking for, like, what? A few months? Yeah. If I that, think Yeah. Maybe last year? Yeah, I think it's been, like, almost a year. We've just been mm. having chats on and off. And just watching you, like, 
the way that you've kind of progressed over the year and you said yeah I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that like I even saw your thing about when you were saying that you wanted to do be a retail manager yeah and then it's, it's Yesterday. you had that awareness you know yeah you had that awareness where you were like do you know what maybe it was just the next thing up and that's why I was aiming for it yeah but actually it's not really what I want and it's kind of like that now like you have the awareness mm-hmm. in yourself to say like okay if I do need to do have to go through this again that's fine because I know now that it's not forever like I know now that I can see I don't know because I had an appointment yesterday and all my videos are sort of recorded on the day um and I was speaking to the physio and I was like is there an operation where I can lengthen my leg mm-hmm. um, so that so they're naturally uh, a similar sort of length? Mm-hmm. They were like, "Yes, there is." And I was like, "Oh, great! This is this is my sort of way out of the whole situation." And then he was like, "Yeah, but the the process is gruesome." Mm-hmm. And I was like. This and it's a huge um, recovery time as well. Like I've been seeing that like people, even just like that mm-hmm. heightening surgery, you know what I mean? Like apparently it's one of the most dangerous surgeries you can do. I don't know. They didn't say it to me. Um, so I don't know mm. much about it. But they said it was gruesome. Because all I need is six millimeters, which isn't too much. But it's an actual splint with um, dog needles mm-hmm. in your actual leg. And you've got to twist them every day. Um, apparently around the house I was like you know what I'm not going back on crutches because I know I know myself mm-hmm. and I've become very dependent and very lazy on them do you know yourself or do you know who you were then because right you're a different person today than who you were then I think know? I think once I told my mum I was like I don't want to go back to that I don't want to go back to that pain that I was in yeah. previously I don't want to go back on crutches and be like I'm going to depend on them again. Mm-hmm. Because I'll get comfortable and I know I'll get comfortable. Um, and I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to crash this again. This, mm-hmm. is, this was meant to be and whatever. And I'll just sort of live with it mm-hmm. until I get bored of it. So for me, I sort of know myself mm-hmm. how I'd react to it. So I was like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to go through that again. Do you think that you would have mentally pushed yourself as much as you have this year if it wasn't for what you face, like your condition. I don't think I'd be here um, had I not had my condition. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'd be doing this yeah. um, as a profession. Mm-hmm. Um, so why? So so then but there you go, you know. Don't change yourself for what? Mm. You're going to put yourself through months, if not years, of pain. Yep. Just to alter something so minorly that yep. this is who you are. You're an incredible human. You know, mm. you're an incredible, incredible As human. I thank you very much. And you're very inspiring. So, I mean, you know, <sighs> and you wouldn't have pushed yourself as much if you didn't face challenges that other people didn't face. Because, yeah. I mean, you, you know, I think. I think I really started pushing after COVID. Yeah. I think that was when I was like, I okay. think COVID was, so, not COVID, but like lockdown was so good for people. It gave them a chance to really think, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I think after the first lockdown, I was like, I've gotten best of myself. If I, if I don't do it now, mm-hmm. then I never will. And I think that was the first steps for me to go, you know what? This is the journey I want to be on. And, mm-hmm. and it's changed so much mm-hmm, from mm-hmm. 2020. To mm-hmm. now, yeah. Um, I want to be a motivational speaker. I I still do. Yeah. I want to be an author. I still do, but I never thought of being a podcaster. Yeah. Never. Yeah. And I'm doing this now. But you don't know, like, where these conversations will t- like, where these mm. conversations will take you, because, like, how I just said, like, I find you very inspiring as a person. Mm-hmm. That is something that you know. The more you kind of accept that, like wow, actually, I maybe I am making a difference to people, how mm. they perceive you, how they perceive disabilities, how they yeah. perceive just, like, the Latino community or just, you know, whatever it is, mm-hmm. that you don't know, like, you might look back in a year or two years or three years and you're, like, doing a TED Talk or something, mm-hmm. do you know? Yeah. And this is where you started. 100%. I think, to be fair, and I, I've got to give them a lot of credit, is the Mango team. Mm-hmm. 
that the first ever conversation that I had, mm-hmm. um, they had students in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And literally I said to them, I've got a disability. I had three convulsions. Mm-hmm. Um, this is These are my, my conditions. Those kids that are normally out, outside, mm-hmm. they came in and they asked questions and yeah. they were very powerful. Yeah. That I was like, and especially because they're young, they will ask anything that adults will probably be too scared to ask, you know? Yeah, I think I think I, I, I sort of said to them, see me as Google. Yeah, yeah, like, that's that's really, not, yeah. I'm an open book. I, I don't care what questions you have, just mm-hmm. ask me, don't mm-hmm. be nervous. I think the questions that they came up with was inspiring, it was powerful. Um, but I could tell that they were nervous and they didn't really want to ask. Yeah. I really did the same video couple of weeks ago no like a month ago those kids were on another level really? they were like yeah so what do your tattoos mean okay what struggles did you have what yeah, that, yeah the questions yeah, were yeah. very different from the first one yeah. they were like okay you're... yeah but that's so good that you're giving mm-hmm. people the space to the yeah. opportunity in the space to ask that because mm-hmm you don't know how they might change yeah. that for them. And like I said, especially, for example, with invisible disabilities, you might look at someone mm-hmm. and not even know that there's something going on with them, right? But yeah. them just being able to ask you a question, they might be going through something themselves. Mm-hmm. So it gives them a space to not be, like, shy about saying, yeah. oh, I've got this, or, you know, I've got mm-hmm. that. And then once you're not shy about telling other people, you're yeah. not shy about it to yourself, so you start looking into it more. Mm-hmm. And how can I help myself? What can I do for myself, you know? Yeah. And it's really nice that you give people the space just to say, ask what you want. Like, I really like that you said, like, see me as Google. Yeah. That's really, really nice that you would say that to, to people and just give them the chance. Um, and even if some of the questions are weird or like, all right, you know, yeah, it it opens, um, it takes away the taboo. Yeah, you know? 100%. Yeah. Because if I look back at a couple of episodes ago, Nathan, who is sort of like the, the engineer and the, the whole head of this, he sort of starts talking about sex life. Mm-hmm. And that's a question that I will sometimes get, but not very regularly, but mm-hmm, I get mm-hmm. comments. And for me, for him to go to me, are you sexually active? Mm-hmm. That for me was like, oh. Yeah, no one's ever asked me that yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's different, but... You know, by answering the question, yeah. you might help other people understand yeah. things better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me ask you a question. How often were you in hospital when you were younger? I don't even remember. It was it was a lot, um, and it was all for different reasons. Okay. Um, because we never really knew what was going on. So mm-hmm. the 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 initial issue that I had was it Great Woman Street by any chance? No, I never. Oh. But I never, I never because so the condition, especially with endometriosis. Yeah. Um. So I had other issues before that. So I. I've always been anemic, which is low in iron. Yeah. So, um, so I was always very weak, and this, the other, and then for some reason, like mm-hmm. with anemia, um, it's kind of like you could say it's an autoimmune disease. Okay. So it affected other issues of yeah. me. So I had like skin conditions, like I had this thing called psoriasis. Um, my hair would fall out a lot, so I would get like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, bald patches and stuff. But also, I'd get a lot of stomach issues, like stomach pains, right? Um. And just random allergies, random flare-ups. I'm not actually allergic to anything, but I would get random allergy reactions to stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was in and out of hospital a lot, and it was always just like, oh, yeah, she's just going through stuff. And it wasn't until I hit puberty that I started to become a woman, and things started to get a bit more serious for me. And um, so I didn't get, never got sent to Great Ormond, because it was like, oh, it will pass. Oh, it's just this. Oh, it's just that. Oh, she needs an iron transfusion. Oh, Mm -hmm. she needs, like, a blood transfusion. When I was, you know tiny um and then when um when I sort of hit puberty and then things started to sort of change for me then Mm -hmm. and like I was getting even worse like abdominal pains stomach pains lower back pains my legs physically were just like some days I couldn't walk um everything was getting so bad they were like oh it's normal she's you know becoming a woman and you know she started her periods yeah. and this at the other she's you know an adult mm-hmm. now it will all level out and the only thing that in their eyes that was wrong with me is just that i was low in iron and that she has some stomach issues we're not really sure it wasn't until i was 22 
Yeah. So. That's yeah, that, your yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. It wasn't until I was about 22 mm -hmm. or 21, so over 10 years ago, yeah. that I went into hospital because I had a cyst yeah. that had burst and infected my entire right side okay. of my body. Now, I went to the GP um, and I said to them, I've got a cyst. I can feel it like it was on the inside yeah. of my leg. And then she said to me, don't worry, it will go down. It will go down just like hot compress. It will go down. Mm -hmm. It was getting bigger and bigger. It got the size of oh. a golf ball. And then I had two more inside as well, in mm -hmm. like inside my side of my thigh, my low abdomen yeah. that I couldn't see. And so because she told me it would go away, I just went to work. I went to work, collapsed. Yeah. It had burst, infected my entire right side. So now my right side is really, really weak. And because it was so weak, I yeah. didn't, like, it basically wasted away. I've got arthritis now on my wrist, my ankle, my lower back. I had surgery. And it was after that surgery that they said, okay, so once we've done surgery, you realize there's more to it, we're going to mm -hmm. do further investigations. So it wasn't until an adult that then after that, I got diagnosed with my endometriosis. Yeah. After my endometriosis surgery, I then got diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Um, but it wasn't until I was an adult that I actually they took me seriously. When mm. I was a kid, my mum was fighting for me to get yeah. into Great Ormond and do tests on her, but they just was like, no, no, it will level out, it will level out. And they got for a while, well, well that's just how she's, that's yeah. just how she is. So I didn't go to hospital for a while, you know. Um, what hospital are you at now? So I'm I'm with North Middlesex, but I'm okay. moving to UCLH. Okay. Because they're great. Yeah, UCLH. I'm I'm hoping to, but the waiting list is mm. so long. So my GPs are really pushing me because mm -hmm. North Middlesex are awful. Um, I mean they helped me when they could. I I lived near it, so it was the ideal yeah. choice. But um, yeah, over lockdown, yeah, it was just awful. And even now, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm hoping to. Well, I am on the referral list for UCLH. Yeah, they're yeah. they're amazing. Um, I've been there a couple of times, mm. um, but yeah, I I used to go to Great Ormond every six weeks. Wow. Yeah, six weeks. Um, that was for a splint. That was for what else was it for? Physio to see the doctor every six weeks. Then it got moved to every few months. Then it got moved to every six months. Um, because. The, the original diagnosis that my mum got was I'm not going to live past 15 having another kid. And my dad said that in his video. If you want another kid, go have sex. And yeah, I saw they said that. I, I saw your dad's interview. That's like the way that the mentality of people back then is just but insane, isn't North it? North Mid. So, yeah, North so, Mid, yeah, awful. So I'm not surprised. Now looking back, I'm not surprised that that was the mentality. Mm -hmm. Um... But yeah, I sort of started getting better and and as much as I still don't look after myself with my medication, I feel like I'm in such a better place mm -hmm. um, than what I was before. I think I've, I've locked out a lot of the, the paralysis that I suffered. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I've locked out a lot of bad memories yeah our body does that doesn't it like that's why i couldn't even tell you when you asked me how long mm -hmm. how long was i in hospital for i don't remember there's so much of me that it's just like don't remember and i've been to therapy because yeah. I, I mean a lot of the reason why i started therapy because i had trouble accepting what was wrong mm -hmm. with me and then talking about it it's like i don't remember what happened i don't know like i don't know and i think it didn't help that when doctors yeah. don't take you seriously or when doctors just see you as like, like how can they say to your parents just have another child yeah when professionals are seeing you like that Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think I think I, I think the the past mentality was was different. Um, because one of the conversations that I did have with my mum on a one to one basis, because she doesn't watch my videos, neither does my sister. Mm -hmm. They said I get too emotional and yeah. But my dad, my dad would watch the whole thing. My so. dad took part in it, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but. With that video, it took us so long to record. And I promise you, I had to go into the toilet because we were just laughing. Um, mm, that's good that you can laugh, laugh about things, though. No, it? but like, like, if he'd hear me laugh, then he'd start laughing. Mm -hmm. So I had to go into the bathroom and just be like, okay, I'll, I cannot listen to you because yeah. I'm going to burst laugh, burst yeah, yeah. laughing. Um, but no, I think. 
I think it was tough for them. Um, mm-hmm. I think someone that I've not really spoken about on the podcast is my sister. Mm-hmm. As a as a four year old, seeing your brother go through that being mm-hmm. in the hospital, and then every six being incubated in tubes mm-hmm. and being resuscitated. And at that age, she's gonna, it's gonna, you know, be in the her memory somewhere, you know. Yeah. I don't think she likes to talk... No, she doesn't like to talk mm-hmm. about it. I don't think... She, I know she doesn't like to talk about it because she's talking all the time. Because if I go back to... June, April. April 2020 when I made my very first video. We had a moment where we both wanted to sort of cry, but we didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she sort of... She sort of saw the support that I got from the first video. Mm-hmm. And the comments and and she was like, "Juan, did you cry?" I was like, "No," <laughs> but but I did get emotional and and it's not something that that we sort of speak about a lot. Um, she just now sees me as her annoying younger brother. Yeah, you're her brother, regardless, you know. Yeah, I just see her as my older sister who who I love mm. to annoy and and I was saying to Shaz earlier, she's she's now like my best friend. Yeah. Um. We never used to be best friends. We never used to be close. We used to fight constantly. Um, over little things as well. Mm-hmm. Like I used to answer back to her. And but that's just, that's a dynamic, that, yeah. That's just a sibling thing. Yeah. Um, but no, I think over the years we've, we've sort of just got closer and, and she's one of the mm-hmm. the closest people that I have and that mm-hmm. I trust. Mm-hmm. Um and as much, you know, I don't control my sister, but I like to make sure she's okay and sort of make sure she knows the dangers of the road. Mm-hmm. Um, you're you're still her brother, you know. I, it, it, you're I'm protective like, over exactly, her. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't like to control her being like, where are you going? Or what time are you getting back? That I don't like. But I do like to sort of know she's safe. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. my... Me and my sis- my sister's mm. my best friend, and the more you grow up as well, and you realize it is just you two. Because me, like, so my sister is my absolute yeah. best friend as well. The same thing. We argue with this, with that, mm-hmm. the other, whatever. But she's my absolute best friend, and she was meant to be here with me today if she didn't get locked in yeah. her building. Um, but also, you know that no matter what, we have you, each other's back. Yeah, exactly. And like, you know. Mm. I'm going to have good days and bad days, right? So I can make a plan with her. And mm. then if I say to her, do you know what? I'm sorry, I can't. Mm. Like, I physically cannot yeah. today. Like, I really, I can't even get out of bed. It's fine. Don't worry. Like, she might be like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. But she'll never, like, make me feel bad about it because it's not my fault. And I'm blessed to have a best friend like yeah. that as well. My best friend, Diana, she is just, like, even her... I, I we didn't think she was ever going to drive either but she started driving and she's like don't worry she says i got you you need to go somewhere i'll take mm-hmm. you or like we need to do this blah blah, yeah. blah you know she'll be the one like she knows sometimes i can get a bit shy with my doctors so do you want me to come to my, your appointment with you and i'll fight your doctors for you this the other blah blah mm-hmm. like and I, I call her my cousin she's the one that has kids that are my oh, nephew okay. and nieces yeah. right um but it's 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 nice to have those people that you just feel safe around, yeah. and you know that if you said, you know, I can't today, or can you just come and just sit with me, and you know, just just be there. Like we don't have to talk. You can mm-hmm. we can both be on our phones. Just be there, you know. And the older you get, the more you realize, like, and we're, we're actually quite blessed because some people don't get on with their siblings at all. So you know, the older you get, mm-hmm. you realize actually, like, this is it. Yeah, this is it. And even my mum and my dad tell me all the time, like, you have us, but you will like this is all you're going to have, you and your sister, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got my husband, she's got her husband. But if it comes down to it, like if the families are having issues, you know, if there's something going on between the parents or this tia yeah. and that tia, like who can you talk about it but your sibling, you know? Yeah. I think for me, it's just a little bit different. Um, I, I thought we mentioned this to you earlier. For me, uh, my cu- no. Two of my cousins are my absolute world, mm-hmm. um, and I've sort of spoken about them here and there. But my my two younger cousins are like ten years younger than me, and I'm happy to admit that for the first couple of years, mm-hmm. first two to three years, 
I hated the shit out of mm-hmm. them. Um, and and they know this. They know this. I've told them. Mm-hmm. I hated the shit out of them because they used to annoy me. Um, so we didn't we didn't grow up that close. Mm-hmm. But as they sort of got older, and I've sort of got older, we've developed like uh, a true relationship. Mm, that bond that you know is always going to be there. Yeah. Mm. And they were the first ones when when I sort of decided I'm going to have a podcast. I'm, I'm getting management for the podcast. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. They'll be the first ones to go, go for it. Yeah. You, you can do it. Um, and you know they'll be the first ones to, t- to tell you as well when you can't do it, you know? Like, oh, 100%. Uh, 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 maybe not. Like, think, you know, they'll be the first. And that's that's the valuable thing is that you know they're always going to be real mm. with you. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Mm. 100%. Um, and, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but I've actually got a... a not a degree. Like, a little qualification in mm-hmm. makeup. Oh, no way. Yeah. Um... That's so random, but so cool. <laughs> yeah, so so when I started this journey, I was like, I'm going to do a lot of qualifications and just sort of see what I can do because I want to... Put yourself out there to like see what works for you. Not even. I just wanted to to normalise straight men doing makeup. Yeah. Straight men doing this and that. Yeah. Um, because yeah. back then it was... Oh, if he does makeup, he's got to be gay. If, mm. if he does that, he's got to be gay. And for me, it was like, mm. the, the, this topic is getting boring now yeah. and hurrying over and over again. So for me, it was like, Ira, because Ira was my cousin. I was like, Ira, I want to do makeup, but I want to normalise it in a way that people are like, straight men can do yeah, makeup yeah, yeah. without having... Especially in this day and age, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. A, 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 an Iranian friend of mine, actually, he um straight guy yeah but he does um beauty aesthetics so he does like yeah. lip filler nose filler and actually a lot of iranian men that i know do that like, because iranians are big on mm-hmm. plastic surgery so but they're all straight men and they went out and got the qualifications yeah. to do filler and i'm like do you know what i rate that 100%. and that's why i've been teaching my husband how to do my hair oh damn so he can plait. yeah he's learning how to french braid okay because i said one day if you know we're blessed with a daughter you're gonna have to do her hair because my dad did my hair, mm-hmm. my dad painted my nails. There's nothing wrong with it, yep. you know. And it's I think that's really cool, you know. Yeah, I think I think I never actually spoke about it um, because I've always been on this journey. But but for me, it's always been about normalizing these things and sort yeah. of going, you know what? I'm a man. I find this interesting. Yeah. I'm going to go out and see how how what mm-hmm. it's about. Yeah, I think that's so good, and not even just oh, as a man doing this. Just in general, I think people are so scared to take leaps and to do stuff. Yeah, you know, like you with your podcast, you said I'm going to do it, and you went and done it, and that's really admirable. And even me mm-hmm. with with my yoga, when I decided because I've been doing yoga yeah. all my life, I had been doing yoga for many years because it always helped me. Mm-hmm. And then when um, lockdown happened, was it and, the first one? Yeah, yeah. So 2020 happened, and literally like. Uh, this one of the studios that I go to mm-hmm. that I um, just do yoga at yeah. had this thing about teacher training. So I was like, oh, this came at the right time. And it was expensive. And I was like, I don't know. And then because like the, the price of it was also a, an excuse for me to doubt myself. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. oh no, it's too much. I can't do it. But then what if there's no point? Or what if there's someone like, okay, I qualify as a yoga yeah. teacher. Who's going to take me seriously? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? And then my husband, who was still my boyfriend at the time he was like do it it'll be good for you because i know i know this will be good for you and i was like no it's too much it's too much blah blah i yeah. can't do it this year and he was like i'll pay for it i'll pay for it and then when you become a yoga teacher you can pay me back um still as not gonna happen but you know yeah he was like just to give me that sort of um Motivation. incentive um and then before i could even like discuss it like properly with anyone like I just mentioned it to my sister and my best friend he was always like okay I've, I've sent you the money go and do it so yeah. I was like well now I have to do it so I went and did it and mm-hmm. and then after that I was like and my teacher was like my my yoga teacher was like you were made to do this yeah. I was like I am so when it got to my advanced training I was like do you know what I'm doing it they asked me do you want to do mm-hmm. another advanced training and then you could be a specialized teacher and this and the other yeah. I was like do you know what I'm doing it and I took the leap and then once I agreed 
and like went and paid for my advanced training and there's no way going back that was in my head Mm -hmm. was like I'm never going back to who I was anymore before this is me now this is my life now and it's such a scary jump Mm -hmm. like to just like because I could easily go back yeah well not physically I cannot easily but mentally I can easily go back to that nine to five city working life and you know um but yeah I agree But that's like with your with your podcast as well. You just said yeah. like this is what I'm doing, and the decision to not chase to be the manager anymore. And yeah, um, with that, I, I had like different conversations with different people, and and for me, at that point, I was like, I was in Instagram lives, which we were discussing last year, mm-hmm. uh, and for me. I was just becoming bored of them, but I was mm-hmm. doing it because it became a habit. It mm-hmm. became a comfort thing. I was like, let me not lose that, that sort of drive that I had. Um, and then this year I was meant to box, and then I was told I wasn't going to because if I get hit, I'm pretty much brain dead. Um, and that got taken away from mm-hmm. me. I was like, let me let me do a podcast. Mm-hmm. Let me... Let me let me actually try this because mm-hmm. a lot of people have told me to try doing a podcast, which I did, and I'm about 10, 13 episodes in, mm-hmm. and I love it. It's mm-hmm. I think this was what I was meant for, and 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 you're great at it too. Like I'm not just saying mm-hmm. this because I'm here, but it's so easy to chat to you. You know, like it's so easy to have a back and forth. Yeah, and like. It would it you have such a good platform mm-hmm. as someone with a disability, as a Latino, as a man who wants to stop, you know, mm-hmm. the the narrative of men can't do this and men can't do yeah. that, you know? Um and it's like even do you know what, even more so as a Latino talking about these things, because Latinos don't talk about it, especially Latino men don't mm. talk about it. Like only recently are they brave enough to to even say, like, Bring I'm struggling at this at the other, blah, blah. And I'm such a I really try and push yeah. that thing about like I always say to my husband, if you need to cry, cry. If you don't feel good, talk to someone about it. Yeah. You know, do this, do that. Yeah, I um, think I think for me, when I'm not going to name names, but I've got a manager now. Mm-hmm. Um, when he reached out to me um, and said I want to manage you, I think that was the first time I was like. Actually, like oh shit! Me? Actually, I am doing something great because mm-hmm. um, with my lives that never happened, um, and in the past that's never happened. But now it's like okay, I've got a platform I can do this. Yeah, there, there's people that believe in me, and and for me it's like I can make that difference. Yeah, I've just got you can to reach yeah. reach that potential. Yeah. I, I'm I'm really looking forward mm-hmm. to see where else you go and like seeing you yeah. one day on your TED talk. I'll be there like, Thank yeah. You. But um, I've really enjoyed this. 100%. And I don't think, do you know what? I think we have so much more to talk about. So this probably is just part one. <laughs> probably, you know. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. Um, I've got plans for next year. Um, I'm speaking with my manager mm-hmm. soon. Um, but yeah, I think we've got big plans for the podcast, mm-hmm. for the Mango Studio team, which actually they don't know about these plans yet. <laughs> um, but no, honestly, I, I'm I'm grateful for the Mango team, to the manager, mm-hmm. to all the guests, um, because they've allowed me to do this. They've allowed me to to find my platform and my space. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's only up from here. Hundred um, percent. I do have a six week holiday coming up um where i will be sort of organizing myself a little bit more but i'm not going anywhere i'm just going to be organizing myself focusing myself and sort of making sure i come back better in january but i'm excited i'm excited for for taking this podcast Mm -hmm. to the top and i'm bringing the whole team with me Oh, it's been fantastic talking to you today. And to you. It's I'm like honestly, it's I'm glad we finally got to meet in person. Yeah. I'm glad we got to have a chat. And like yep. I said, I think we're gonna have loads of conversations. I'm looking forward to hearing all your Definitely. future podcasts and everything and seeing where you go. Hopefully. So I'm very grateful. I'm very blessed to be here today. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming on. Thank you.
Hopefully we have, have more conversations outside the podcast. Yes, definitely. I think we've got yeah. loads to talk about, especially 100%. after Christmas. We need to talk. Yes. <laughs> A Latino Christmas. Gone full oh. circle there. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Pretty much.